Hey there, friends. In my last video, I showed you five cool things you didn't know you could do in Photoshop that would make your life easier. And today, I'm gonna show you five additional cool things that you didn't know that you didn't know. I'm Kara Plichinich, and I make it easy to learn Photoshop, photography, and more with fun, project-based classes available whenever you are. Find them all at karaplichinich.com, along with the free creative toolkit to jumpstart your next project. Okay, here we go with number five. Easily switch between paragraph and point or headline type. In Photoshop, there's a couple different ways to add a type layer. You can give a single click and then type, and this will create text in what we call headline type or point type, which means it just runs on and on forever until you manually hit return to bring your cursor down to the next line. So that's one way. Another option is to click and drag. This creates a box where if you type in the box, the text will automatically wrap down to the next line, making it easy to manage the space that the text is taking and also easy to edit because you're not having to manually adjust line breaks. So sometimes you might be working with a document that someone else created or maybe you created and maybe you used headline type and then you changed your mind and you wish that you had put it as a paragraph in a, in a box. So that's what we have here. We have a line of type that is created as headline or point type. So if I want to break this into different lines of type, I have to manually insert line breaks. And that can be a real pain for editing. And of course, I could highlight all of this and copy it, delete the type layer, create a new one, draw a new text box and paste it in. But there's a better way. With this type layer selected, I can also just come up here to the type menu and choose convert to paragraph text. And you'll notice that now when I click in here, it has a bounding box around it, which means I can drag it just like this. And I'll grab my move tool and position it right over here. And it just makes it really easy to convert your text in the cases where you wanna go between headline or point text and paragraph text. Number four, cycle through your open images. Okay, so I cannot possibly be the only person who often has many, many, many images open at a time. Usually, I mean, I could easily have 10 at a time and you can't even see all of the tabs. You can also come over here to that little um, double carrot and you can select from open files right here. Or you can go to the window menu and scroll all the way down and you'll see them here. But often my files have names like this one, which doesn't tell me anything about what the file is and it's hard to, to know. So rather than clicking through all these tabs and just trying to find what I'm looking for, we can do it with the keyboard. So this is especially useful if you are in full screen mode. So I'm gonna press F for full screen mode. And in this mode, um, it's full screen mode with the menu bar. So I can still see some stuff up here, but I don't see my open image tabs anymore. So if I wanna just cycle through my open images, I can press on my keyboard command, or now I'm just assuming, I haven't tested this in Windows, but control, um, and then the tilde key. So on my keyboard, that is the top farthest left key, the little squiggle that you would see over an N, like, manana in Spanish. So if I hold down command or control and I just hit the tilde key, it just cycles through my open images. Now, if I wanna go backwards and cycle the other way, I can add shift tilde. And now I'm cycling through them backwards. Number three, clearing out your recent font list. So as someone who does a lot of design work, I'm constantly trying different fonts for different things. So for example, let's say that I'm working with this type here and I wanna see how it looks in a different font. So I come up here and maybe I'm clicking this drop down and I'm scrolling through my embarrassingly long list of fonts 
to try and like work my way through and test different things. And let's say I get down to my M's and I try Medina script. So here we see these uh, type layers in Medina script. That's good. Now, if I'm liking it, but I want to keep looking, if I come back and click this drop down again, you can see that I see Medina script up here. And you can see that there's a division. So what this is, this is my list of the last 10 fonts that I have selected or used. The problem is that I, to me, this is not as handy because what I want to do is get back to my M's so I can keep scrolling and see if there's anything else, which means I have to come over here and scroll, 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 and try to find my M's and then come back over and keep going through here. So what I wish would happen would be that when I come back to this drop down, I want Photoshop to just go back to the font that I had and show me where it is in this list so I can just keep keep looking. And it turns out that you can actually get it to do that, but you have to change your preferences. So on a Mac that's under Photoshop preferences type, on a PC, it would be up here under file preferences type. So either way, go into your preferences, into your type preferences, and right here where it says number of recent fonts to display, personally, I find it more useful to just type zero. And then we'll click OK. And now when I come up here and I click this drop down, you can see that not only is that long list of fonts that I've already clicked on not showing up, but it also jumps right to my selected font and I can just keep scrolling through my list. So let's say I select a different one. Let's see what, I don't know, this one, Oscar Inline. Let's say we click on that and then we're like, eh, no, let's come up here, click this drop down. You can see it goes right back to where I was and I don't have to deal with scrolling through everything. Saves me a ton of time. Number two, letting your brush cursor know who's boss. So this one I figured out um, by accident after years of pulling my hair out in frustration. Let's say that you've got your paintbrush, you can see there's your cursor and you're doing your thing, you're painting along, maybe you add some text, whatever, your switch tools come back and then suddenly your brush cursor looks like this. And instead of being able to see your brush tip, you just see these crosshairs now. So this would drive me crazy and I would try resetting my brush and doing any number of things to get it back. And then one day I realized the culprit was the caps lock key. So when the caps lock key is on, you see the precise cursor and when it's off, you see the cursor that you expect to see. And finally, my number one most useful, helpful tip is setting your layer thumbnails to show the layer contents. What does that even mean? So here we have a image project that I created for Adobe Max, and I will put a link to this class down below. It's a free three-part um, workshop from the 2020 Adobe Max. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you check it out. And this is one of the files that we build. And you can see there are lots of pieces and it's super fun and silly. And over here in the layers panel, you can see that I've labeled all of these things like what? Mm, guess? I don't know, no clue, who knows? Question mark, hmm, because Oftentimes, when you're working in Photoshop, you have really tiny things on the layer. And perhaps you're better than I am about routinely labeling everything in the moment. And so this doesn't apply to you. But to me, it's really hard to see what is on all of these layers. And it's just kind of a hassle. So a really cool, helpful trick is to come to the menu for your layers panel and select where did it go? Panel options, here it is. And down here where it says thumbnail contents, instead of entire document, change it to layer bounds. And now when you click okay, look at that. 
the thumbnail just displays the contents of the layer rather than the entire document. So this little star right here, I can actually see what it is now. Same with this asteroid and the different planets and the Saturn ring, etc. So that, I can't tell you what a revelation this was when I figured this out. So um, I pretty much leave it this way forever and always. And it has made my life a lot easier and I hope it makes yours easier too. That does it for five quick things to make your Photoshop life easier. Make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you again next time.